Hi, this is my video on how does buying the button in poker work? And I'm Van. I'm not a professional poker player. I'm not a dealer. I don't own or even work in a casino. I'm just an amateur poker player. And I hadn't seen a good video explaining how you buy the blind in poker. So I did a little research and I came up with this video. So if you enjoy it and find it informative, a like and a subscribe would be very appreciated. So for this video, I'm assuming that you know at least a little bit about how to play poker with blinds, you know how blinds ordinarily work, but maybe you're a little confused by what the dealer means when they ask do you want to buy the button or when someone sits down and buys the button or doesn't buy the button, you're not sure what's going on. That's what this video is here to explain. So for the purposes of our video, let's imagine that four friends are playing $1, $2, no limit hold and poker together. Robbie the Robot from Forbidden Planet, uh, Daryl Dixon from The Walking Dead TV series, uh, Marcus Kincaid from the Borderlands uh, video game, and Aristotle, one of the fathers of the modern Western intellectual tradition. Uh, and my cat Pinky would also like to help a little bit with this video. So if you see her wandering in, that's what's going on. So the four of them are playing $1, $2, no limit poker. Uh, Daryl has to get up to use the bathroom or kill some zombies, something like that. And while he is away, he misses the big blind. So when you miss the big blind, the poker dealer will give you a chip saying big blind or missed blind because the blinds are kind of the rent you pay to keep playing at the table. So they're not going to let you get away without uh, paying them one way or another, and they give you this little thing and they put it on your position at the table to indicate that you missed the blinds and you're going to have to make that up somehow. So uh, at this point, the button is on Robbie and Daryl's not there. So Marcus is posting the small blind and Aristotle is posting the big blind. But wait, Daryl got back from killing zombies or whatever he had to do. And so in this situation, where Daryl is the next person clockwise from the button. The dealer is going to ask Daryl, would you like to buy the button? And let's suppose in this situation, Daryl says, yes, I would like to buy the button, right? Then in this situation, and only in this situation where Daryl's missed the blinds and he's immediately clockwise from the button, if the dealer says, would you like to buy the button? And he says, yes, the following things are all going to happen. So Daryl will give the button, uh, the missed blind button, to, back to the dealer. And then Marcus and Aristotle are going to pull their blinds back because Daryl is going to pay all the blinds for this particular hand. And so he posts the big blind, which in this case is $2 right in front of himself. And then he posts a uh, $1, a small blind. And technically the big blind is, in this case is live and the small blind is dead. You don't have to worry about the terminology too much. Basically what it means is the $2 is going right in front of Daryl. And anybody who wants to play in this hand is gonna have to either match or raise those $2. The $1 that Daryl put out for the small blind is going to go in the center of the table. And that's part of the pot that everybody's going to be competing for. But it's not part of the bet amount that you're going to have to match uh, or exceed in order to play this hand. So it functions, in other words, just like a regular uh, big blind. Now, pre-flop, action starts with the person who's clockwise from the big blind. And Daryl is acting as the big blind. So in this case, action will start pre-flop with Marcus. In a way, that's just like it would normally work if you had a regular small blind and big blind. Action pre-flop starts clockwise from the person who is in the big blind. And then post-flop, on the flop and all the later streets, action starts with the first player who's still active, who's still in the hand, clockwise from the button. In this case, we can see everybody's got cards. So the first person clockwise from the button is Daryl. So action will start with him. Again, that's how it would normally work post-flop. Action starts with the first player still in the hand 
clockwise from the button. So in a way, it really doesn't work that different from the way you normally expect the action to go in a poker game, as long as you keep in mind who's acting as the big blind in this hand. Now at the end of the hand, the button moves as it usually does one space clockwise and the blinds go exactly where you think they would go. So the small blind is one player to the right of the button and the big blind is two players to the right of the button, just like it normally would. Notice here though, that if Daryl had not sat down, <clears throat> then Marcus and Aristotle were ready to post the small blind and the big blind anyway. So the action now is basically the same as what the action would have been <clears throat> had uh, Daryl not come back to the table. So it really isn't that, that hard to understand once you get the, the basic idea. Now, what if when Daryl sits down, he refuses to buy the blind because you don't have to. The dealer is gonna say, do you wanna buy the blind? And you can always say no. Well, if Daryl refuses to buy the blind, he's gonna keep the, the little uh, button indicating that he hasn't paid the blind yet. And he will not be dealt in on the upcoming hand. The button is where it was before with Robbie and Marcus is gonna be the small blind, Aristotle is gonna be the big blind just like they were going to do before Daryl sat down. Daryl's gonna be there, but he's not gonna get dealt in this hand. Now, what happens next? You might think, oh, I get it. So the buttons with Robbie and Daryl is one C clockwise from Robbie. So I, I bet Daryl's gonna get the button now. No, um, and here's why, think about it. So Marcus is the small blind, Aristotle, is the big blind when you're the small blind what you normally have happen to you next is you get the button and when you're in the big blind you then normally shift to the small blind and the person clockwise from you and then becomes the big blind in order for that to happen the button has to skip over daryl and go to marcus so that the relationship between the button the small blind and the big blind is maintained throughout the hand so uh, Daryl is not going to get the button. But now that Daryl is behind the button, the button is past Daryl, Daryl can post the blinds that he missed before and re-enter the hand. So again, he's missed a small blind and a big blind. So he's going to have to post the big blind of two right in front of him. And then he'll also post the small blind. And again, this will become part of the pot. It'll be dragged, the dealer will probably drag it to the center of the table and it'll become part of the pot. Um, but uh, you, uh, the bet that Daryl has made is effectively two. And that's what you have to match or raise if you want to stay in the hand. But this doesn't function exactly the same as buying the button. Why? Because if Daryl's gonna post after the button's gone by him, the small blind and the big blind are still gonna be posted. So in addition to the small blind and the big blind that Daryl had to post to get back in the hand, to pay his rent to get back into a round of poker, you're still gonna have the small blind, which in this case is Aristotle, and the big blind, which in this case is a Dalek from Doctor Who, who are going to post their blinds. Now there's a lot of blind bets, bets that are made before people have seen their cards out now. So this is a pretty good time for a steal. So if I were Robbie and if it were checked to me, I'd probably raise with almost any two cards because there's so much money in the pot that people were forced to put in before they could even evaluate the quality of their hands. So it's a good place for a steal. But that's really uh, more a strategy thing. And, he, and for the purposes of this video, I just kind of want to help you to understand the basic rules. So when you leave the table for whatever reason, you know, maybe you're going to kill zombies or you're going to uh, sell some weapons to people or you're going to, uh, you know, produce the foundations of the Western intellectual tradition or you're going to kill uh, Martians with your lightning bolts or you're going to try to kill Doctor Who. Whatever you have to leave the table for and you miss the blinds, there are basically three ways you can get back into the game. You can wait, sit out hands until the big blind rotates around to you again. And in this picture, that's what's happened with Daryl. He decided to sit out hands 
until the big blind came back to him. The Dalek is in the, the button here, Robbie's in the small blind, and now once again, Daryl is in the big blind, so he can re-enter that way. Now, does Daryl have to also post the small blind when he posts the big blind? No, um, because the logic is you're in the big blind now and you're gonna be posting the small blind in a second anyway. So you don't also have to post the small blind even though you're re-entering um, the rotation. The second way uh, you can re-enter the game is you can post the big and small blinds after the button is past you, uh, but before the big blind gets to you. So you can wait until you're in the cutoff or the hijack or the low jack or middle position or early position to post the two, the two, both the big and the small blind. Of course, if you're in early position, um, it's, you know, there's not much point in doing it because you can just wait until the big blind gets to you, but, but you can always do that. So, you know, that's what's happening here in this picture with Daryl. The button's gone past him and he's decided to post the big blind and the small blind. The third thing you can do is what we were talking about for the first part of the video, and that is you can buy the button, but this is only available to you if you rejoin the game in the next seat clockwise from the button. So if you rejoin a game, they haven't dealt the cards yet, right? But we're not in the middle of a hand. Um, and you sit down again, one seat clockwise from the button, in most casinos, you can buy the button by posting the big blind and the small blind. And in that particular situation, the people who would have been the big blind and the small blind will take their blinds back. Um, and you are the only one posting blinds in that hand. It's a very specific situation. So that's the basic way that buying the button works. Now you might be asking, well, I can buy the button, but I don't have to. Should I buy the button or should I post once the big blind goes past me or should I just wait for the blinds to go around again? Well, that's the kind of question that poker players, especially ones who are very mathematically oriented, like to argue about. Probably mathematically, it's slightly better for you just to sit and wait until the big blind comes around again. Um, instead of either posting or buying the button. Personally, I always buy the button if I have the opportunity. And if I have a chance to post uh, the big blind and small blind in late position, like the cutoff or the hijack for sure, maybe even the low jack, I'll do it. Why? It's fun to get in on the action. It keeps the action at the table moving. Um, it might be, I mean, again, there's some mathematical arguments about this. It might be slightly negative EV, negative expected value uh, to post. Uh, but I think it's, you know, if you're doing it in late position or you're buying the button, if it is negative expected value, it's very small negative expected value in the long run. You know, you, the rest of your play is what's going to make a difference to whether you're a winning or a losing player. So personally, I do it. But if you want to be really mathematically precise, again, you can argue with, you know, about this with people. But um, I really precise math people sometimes are like, just wait until the blind comes around again. But personally, I always buy the button if I'm given the opportunity. And if I don't, I just post the blinds in the uh, like the, the cutoff or the hijack. Then again, I'm an amateur player. I'm not a hugely winning player, although I'm a winning player, but not hugely winning, so what do I know? Do whatever you want to do. Now, there are some other situations that come up, and part of the reason I did this video is I was trying to think, well, what are some other things that happen around the blinds and the button? Now, of course, as I say, you can re-enter from any position if you're willing to post the blinds that you missed, but in particular, how does it work if you're near the button? So, for example, what if Aristotle missed the blinds in this situation? So he's the one who walked away to, um, you know, lay the foundations of the Western intellectual tradition for a few minutes before he came back. Well, notice Aristotle is in the position we call under the gun. He's right after the big blind. So the easiest thing for Aristotle to do is just wait a hand. If he comes back to the table before the cards are dealt, just wait. And in one hand, he'll be in the big blind and he can re-enter for just the cost of the big blind. Again, when you re-enter on the big blind, you don't have to also post the small blind because you're going to post the small blind 
on the next hand anyway. So that's the easiest way for Aristotle to do it. However, another option in many casinos, although not all, is Aristotle can straddle. If you're interested in what straddling is, and you'd like to see me do a video about that, leave a comment, and if a number of people are interested, I'll do it. But basically, a straddle is like an optional extra blind that goes uh, clockwise from the big blind. And the, in this case, it's a $1, $2 game, so the small blind is $1, the big blind is $2. The straddle is usually double the big blind. So in this case, it would be $4. And there's a huge discussion about the mathematics and the, the strategy of, of using straddles. Um, and they're not legal in every locality and not every casino where they are legal allows them. But where they are allowed, if Aristotle really wants to get in on the action, he could post the straddle. And then the action would go, uh, the person clockwise from Aristotle would be the first to act pre-flop and it would go all the way around to Robbie who would then act, and then Daryl, and then Marcus, and then Aristotle would have the last action pre-flop. He could uh, check if no one had raised, uh, or he could raise. Um, all his options are open to him. What if Marcus missed the blind? So Marcus was away, you know, selling uh, guns to people in the borderlands, and he comes back, uh, right before the cards are dealt, but after the conclusion of the previous hand. Well, this one's easy. Notice that Marcus uh, is in the position where he can be the big blind. So what will happen in this case is simple. Uh, Aristotle will pull his uh, big blind back, or the dealer will tell him to, and Marcus will take the big blind. Um, so that's really easy if you're in Marcus's position and you come back. Again, this is all if you come back to the table uh, after the, uh, before the start of the new hand and before the cards are dealt. You know, in this case, you just post the big blind. Um, what if Daryl missed the big blind? Well, that's what the whole uh, you know, point of the first part of the video was. So go back and watch that if you still don't understand. One question I had though was, well, we said that Robbie was on the button. What if Robbie missed the blinds while he was on the button and he wanted to come in effectively on the button, what happens then? Well, this seems like a sensible question, but it turns out if you think about it really carefully, it doesn't normally happen. Now, you, you know, in poker, there are no absolutes. And so if I say, well, it never happens, well, I'm not gonna say it never happens. Uh, why? Because different casinos have different rules. There's a million different weird situations that come up. Sometimes dealers or even the floor won't enforce the rules consistently. But normally, you're not going to have a situation where Robbie comes in on the blind and then wants to get in and then wants to post. Why not? Well, let's think about what would the hand have been like prior to the one that Robbie wants to come in on. If Robbie has a chance of having the button, that must mean that the button was with, on the previous hand, was with the person who is. Uh, one position counterclockwise from Robbie. Suppose it's the Dalek in this particular example. Well, we're imagining that Robbie's away from the table doing his thing. Um, and so, and the button is with the Dalek, but that means that Daryl's going to have to post the small blind and uh, Marcus is going to have to post the big blind. In order for that to uh, work, when you post the small blind, you expect to have the button next hand. When you post the big blind, you expect to have the small blind next hand. And the person who's under the gun is supposed to get the, the big blind. Now, if the button went to Robbie's position, right, then that all wouldn't happen on the next hand. On the next hand, you just have a repeat of the blind situation you had before. So what's gonna happen, even if Robbie comes back, is that the button is gonna jump over Robbie and go to Daryl. And then Marcus is gonna post the small blind and Aristotle is gonna post the big blind. Now, of course, at this point, Robbie can post a big blind and small blind because the button is now past him. But that's what's gonna happen. You're not gonna have a situation where Robbie returns on the button because the button's gonna jump over him because you need to keep the button and the small blind and the big blind together. 
um, and they have to move together around the table. So that's my little video about how does buying the button work. I hope I got that all right, and I hope you found that helpful. Uh, if you'd like to see me explain how blinds work in general, because you, you never learned how blinds work, and maybe you'd like to play poker, but blinds intimidate you a little, leave a comment, and if enough people want, I'll do a video about that. If you would like a video explaining straddles, I'd be happy to do that. But in any case, if you found this a helpful video, uh, clicking that like button and subscribing to the channel would be much appreciated. Anyway, thank you very much. This has been How Does Buying the Button Work? I'm Van, and I'll see you at the poker tables.